I'm just astounded because you know when I see people who've been who have been growing up in the blockchain, they think about things completely differently. And anyone who's got a spark between their ears understands what I'm talking about. So um, our chain is the first publicly owned, publicly operated, scalable blockchain. So we're, we're a co-op, uh, and sort of the core, the core value there is one member, one vote. Um, so I think there are a lot of developers, especially in the open source community, who really understand why this matters. <laughs> there was lots and lots of room in the wild, wild west of the internet. And then there were lots and lots of, of uh, people that tried to grab real estate and set up fiefdoms and stuff like that. But the truth is that it's an infinite place. The blockchain helps open up that space again. The blockchain provides some of the things that we didn't um, have before. Again, this notion of consensus a way that we can all agree on something that is economically secured without anyone being in charge. That's really important. And then building applications on this layer where we can agree on the, on the data, that's huge, right? Because it, it gives us transparency like we've never had before. The blockchain essentially reboots the internet. So we're, it's like internet done right. So there's a whole bunch of code bases that just all have to be rewritten. <laughs> right? And so even with hindsight, it's still a mammoth job. And that's what metaprogramming gives you. Um, but then on top of that, you have this new class of applications that are going to come after we have, you know, decent blockchain platforms. Uh, so, and think about it, right? So, so we want a decentralized map service, right? We want a decentralized email service. We want a decentralized tracking and logistics service. The list goes on and on. Just taking all of the services that everybody uses right now, you know, when you pull out your phone, all of that should have decentralized versions. And then there are all the new applications that we never thought of, right? And we want to be able to make, accelerate those. So the blockchain puts all of that up in a record that everybody can see. This kind of transparency uh, will make a huge difference and it makes differences in different parts of the world. Uh, for example, land records. This is a big issue, right? And it, it's, not, it's not just about the transparency of, I paid this money, I got this, this dwelling, this home, this house. It's also, and I can prove it to everyone that I really, really own this <laughs> according to this record and someone can't come along and say, no, you never owned this, we lost the title. So one of the things that, that I like to talk about is cognitive burden. So whether you're talking about Solidity or Java or, or lots of other things, it's not a what you see is what you get language. There's lots and lots of stuff that you have to keep track of in your head because it's not on the page. That means a lot of your cycles are going to what's in your head and you're not being supported by what you see on the page. For example, if you try to look at uh, Java or C Sharp, or um, even OCaml um, in a multi-threaded context. You can't tell from looking at the code how many th active threads are running through this code. In Rolang, you can see at a glance. So that's huge. Because what that means is that you can also employ static analysis to catch certain kinds of problems. So you can catch things like oh, there aren't really enough threads running to serve these requests, so there's going to be a starvation issue here. Or, these two threads are competing for the same resource, so we might end up, <laughs> we might end up with a race condition here. Right, so all of these things are things that we can catch through static analysis of Rolang code. And Rolang has this feature where what you see is what you get. Everything you need to think about when you're reasoning about your programs is actually on the page. And that's a fundamentally different approach. It's ideally suited for programming applications at this time. And guess what? 
You have to have concurrency to scale out the blockchain. You have to have it. There's no option otherwise. Solidity is gonna have to have a threading mechanism, right? It's not going to work otherwise. Um, and you can't bolt that on the side and still have a what you see, what you get model. So, <laughs> you're kind of left with some very, very tight design considerations that lead you in a particular direction. And Rolang is the path of least resistance. There's a kind of following the flow that has to do with being aware of all the design constraints and then just finding that, that simple, easy design that fits in all the constraints. What I really think people ought to understand, especially the young developers, what motivates me, what, what's exciting to me, is when I see, you know, you know, 18-year-olds talking about mechanism design. They sit down and they, they, they devise a token-based game that's going to incentivize some behavior they want to see in the world. Whether it's helping reduce the use of plastic bags or cleaning up the ocean, they, they come up with some kind of game that, that gets people jazzed that ends up with a positive effect in the world. And, and what I would love to do is just turn it around. What gets you excited? What, what is it that, that makes you go, you know, I just got to get out of bed. I can't sleep. My head is on fire. I got to do this. And because I think that our chain is that kind of sandbox that allows people to go after their dreams. And, and, and we, we not just built a programming uh, environment for that, but we built a community that supports that. That, you know, in, in some sense, that's the, the whole point of the, the way we've um, organized the cooperative, is to be able to support that kind of enthusiasm and passion. And, and there's a strong reason for that, because we have to muster every single ounce of passion that we've got in order to handle what's coming down the pipe. I mean, I'm, I'm not joking. <laughs> it's really serious what's about to happen and we need people super motivated in order to get through the environmental changes that are about to take place. So that's really what our chain is all about.